<laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, another great edition here, right here on K-Tech and also available on YouTube. Uh, as we celebrate the road to WrestleMania this uh, weekend, uh, WrestleMania 30, as you guys know, will be uh, in New Orleans uh, this Sunday, April 6th. And uh, what better way to celebrate WrestleMania weekend with, with, with a legendary uh, wrestling announcer, commentator, the guy who, you know, if you don't know him, uh, where the hell you been? Mr. B. Gene Oakland. How's it going? Well, I've been, I've been called a lot of things, and you covered about half of them in that introduction. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, B. And Gene. I appreciate you being on. You know, I'm not exactly certain where you're located. I got telephone numbers from all over the world and the different towns and states that I've never even heard of. But <laughs> wherever you are, it's going to be a great day. Oh, of course, uh, and it's even great, greater now that uh, you and I uh, are, are are communicating today. I agree. <laughs> so, so as we uh, as we talk about WrestleMania, uh, are you are are you going to be at WrestleMania this year? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what do you think you're playing with sheep? <laughs> uh, of course, I'm going to be at WrestleMania, and uh, I'm going to be also part of the. Hall of Fame the night before, you know, I was inducted back in 2006, and I'm not so certain the company doesn't have a surprise for me that uh, I may be inducting somebody who I do not know. Okay. That's why it's a surprise. Oh, yes. Yeah, so. you're, you're following me there. Yep, yep, yep. I Oh, I definitely am. we got, we got a great class, though, as you know. I mean, with the Ultimate Warrior, uh, you've got... Uh, Jake the St. Roberts. I uh, believe Mr. T is going to be part of it. I mean, that list goes on and on. Very impressive. Yeah, uh, last night uh, or this past uh, Monday night on Raw, we uh, found out that uh, Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, uh, is also going to be inducted. Right, I got the call from him uh, in the middle of a lot of part of uh, the week, and he had just received the news, and, you know, he's turned his life around a lot, so... Uh, He's thrilled with the opportunity of uh, of this induction into the hall. He deserves it, by the way. Oh yeah, uh, both him and Jake the Snake Roberts uh, uh, last year, especially uh, with the help of Diamond Dallas Page, uh, uh, really turned their life around. You know, from where they were to where they are now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think uh, uh, DDP has got to be given uh, a lot of credit in getting those guys to wear their hats right, because. Uh, uh, it was a little, a little rough there for, I would say, a couple of decades for both of those guys. Uh, they got into the wrong crap, and uh, um, that, that's history now, though. Oh, yeah. It's a whole new life. <laughs> and that's what's uh, so excited about. But for you, of course, uh, uh, when it comes to WrestleMania, I mean, and, and just being involved in pro wrestling, I mean, this has been pretty much uh, your life for, what, at least 30, 40 about 40 years hey, 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 let me do the math on it, okay? <laughs> okay. I, I, don't, I don't want you busting my balls <laughs> and letting these people know exactly how old I am. <laughs> Even though I believe it's in the record. Hey, we're not on YouTube, are we? Uh, we're, uh, well, uh... I hear, well, hold it, you know, I'm, I'm a little scantily dressed here in my office. <laughs> and, uh, I don't want anything going out over YouTube that, uh... Might embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, but uh, we're also streaming on uh, K Tech, uh, which is uh, here in Rapid City, South Dakota. And uh, about uh, back in the uh, late 90s, you, uh, you participated in all four uh, of uh, the WCW's uh, Road Wild or Hog Wild in 96, and then the Road Wild from 97 to 99. And, right. Uh, uh, and I spent a little time up there in, uh, in, in Sturgis. Uh, I spent a little time up there with Dennis Rodman. Dennis has got two speeds, zero and 130. <laughs> and, uh, and I did uh, have access to a bike, but I, uh, I couldn't keep up with this guy. And there's something about shots. You know, out in the Black Hills there, people, they get Buffalo. What are shots for? <laughs> I don't know. I I, I really don't. Uh, I guess if you really uh, like to like to drink, I guess uh, shots are are a traditional thing in, in just about every bar. <laughs> yeah, not 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 my deal. But uh, I'd sooner have a nice 
dry martini. <laughs> but nonetheless, no, uh, getting back to uh, the Hall of Fame, uh, it's going to be very exciting. We've got it in the big building where the, uh, the Bobcats play. And, uh, of course, uh, right, right next door is the Louisiana Mercedes-Benz Superdome. And that's going to be the location this year of WrestleMania 30. Man, it's come a long way. No more Madison Square Gardens. Well, we had the Hall of Fame there last year. But it's going to be from here on out in all the big super venues. You know, and I think, think that says a lot in itself. You know what? I was really uh, surprised that uh, even though this uh, already happened about a month ago with the Metrodome finally being uh, uh, destroyed or demolished, I'm surprised they never decided to want to have a WrestleMania uh, in Minneapolis at the Metrodome one last time. Well, the, the Metrodome was uh, great in its day. I was against it in 1982 when they put it up, but uh, I got to kind of like it, and it did make sense up in Minnesota when you're playing uh, – you know, baseball in April and football in December. Uh, why, why the hell would anybody want to sit out in the middle of the elements to watch a athletic event? The only problem with uh, WrestleMania, the time of the year that it takes place, what are your chances of getting to Minneapolis? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's true, but I, but it's still heated, it's still indoors, and it's, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, I, I think it would have been kind of nice, at least just one time to say, hey, we had a WrestleMania at the Metrodome, you know? Well, we had a Final Four there, and uh, uh, a lot of playoff games, and a couple of rock concerts, so uh, they did miss a WrestleMania, and that's uh, gone forever. Yeah, that's for sure, but... Uh, but I mean, it was just something that I wanted to bring up because since you since you and I are both uh, Minnesota uh, residents originally, I'm from northern Minnesota, and, and I know that you were you were from Minnesota as well, which is kind of cool. Minnesota, you're, 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 you're from northern Minnesota. What what town in northern Minnesota? Uh, Greenbush. <laughs> Greenbush. Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> What, what, what street in Great Bush? Oh, in, in Great Bush? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a small town, so it's like, uh, it's right on, it's on the map. No, 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 no. Was it Walnut? Was it Maple? <laughs> what street? Uh, Fifth Street. I never heard of it. Yeah, I know. It's one of those, I mean, you, you heard of Lake of the Woods, obviously. We were talking before about that. Um, right, and, <laughs> and, and, and Baudet. Yeah, yes. And, and, and uh, that's kind of cool that you actually uh, uh, still come up to that area. Well, I, I, I do, and it is a little cooler than Florida in the uh, in the summer. So it is kind of cool that I do go up there <laughs> and uh, and enjoy it immensely. Got a lot of friends still up in uh, in Minnesota. Now, uh, uh, in between your time as an announcer, uh, you also got to participate in a lot of different things that uh, the WWE has uh, let you uh, produce and stuff. Uh, uh, we just launched the WWE Network over a month ago, and uh, that's been pretty successful so far. Yeah, I like the uh, WWE Network. You know what it does? It gives access to a little older fan, let's say, you know, 40s, 50s, uh, and even maybe beyond to uh, take a look and reflect on some of the material from, you know, uh, a few decades ago. And uh, just by my own observation, i got to tell you, a lot of it is still very good, exciting to watch. I watched the uh, Battle Bowl 93 that I kind of hosted there with Fifi until Ric Flair absconded with her, that rat. Uh, but, I mean, there were a lot of good things that were done and I think some of them were unintentional. Yeah. So, they, they, they were fun to do. But I, I'm, I'm really actually excited. It, it makes it more worth it when the, when the, the WWEs were nice enough to, to include every pay-per-view from the past. I mean, that's, uh, that's amazing. That's like you're getting a, you're getting a hell of a, of a deal when it comes to that stuff. Well, I mean, at ten times the price, it would be a steal. <laughs> uh, I, I've got to say this. For ten bucks a month, and a six-month uh, commitment, that's 60 bucks. We can do the math on that. And you're getting WrestleMania. You're getting all of the uh, pay-per-views, in addition to all of this archive material. I mean, there's stuff that's going back here 40 or 50 and some even 60 years. 
Yeah, because I noticed they have like a, a WWE Vintage collection, like a, a old school that they have, and then they have like a bunch of old programming. I like what I like the Beyond the Ring feature because it, it features all the documentaries that they have made and produced over the years that they're finally releasing on demand. Even though some of that stuff's available on Netflix, but they're like week by week they they come up with a new uh, uh, superstar to to reflect on. But I think I think it, it's another access point for. Uh, the WWE universe. Uh, I, I'd heard that uh, the company had made a few million dollars off YouTube alone, but uh, now they've got their own home, and I think it's going to make a big difference. So, what are we going to see? A, a Mean Gene compilation at all? You know, I, I know you. Well, you know, you know what? Uh, that, that, that's a good question, but I think you're going to see. Uh, I don't know if it's going to come in compilation form, but I think that you're going to see a lot of things that I participated in over the years. Because I was with the AWA, I was with the WWF, I was with WCW, and I am currently employed by WWE and having a ball doing it and working with a lot of guys that I worked with 20, 30, 40 years ago. Guys like Pat Patterson, and uh, there's some fresh new guys that I didn't exactly work side by side by, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Triple H, Hunter is there, and, and I see Shawn Michaels. But I still see, I saw him over the weekend, Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart in Charlotte, North Carolina. They were on TV all over New York City yesterday. And uh, I have an opportunity to uh, to see the your boy Ric Flair, who's one of a kind, and he and I sit on and pound the bar a little bit every now and then. <laughs> so what do you think of, uh, of the difference of, of what wrestling was like 30 years ago to how it is today and how it's changed? Well, 30 years ago probably uh, might be a stretch because if we do go back to WrestleMania 1, all of the elements and factors that uh, contributed to the success of that event, I guess, are omnipresent today. Uh, but if you go back 40 years ago, it was smoky National Guard armories, big fat wrestlers, uh, I don't want to say Haystacks Calhoun or <laughs> Farmer Marlin or Mad Mountain Dean, but I mean, those people were around, but then you had the Vern Gagne, you had the Crushers, the uh, Mad Dog Vachons, and later on the Red Bastines, Nick Bockwinkles, and the Bobby Heenan family, and uh, those old AWA days really kind of uh, ring my bell. Very enjoyable working back in those days. And then, and then now it just changed so much, as it should. I mean, uh, you know, everybody probably knew that regardless of which uh, uh, company was going to be uh, uh, number one or whatever, uh, it, it just uh, it's kind of neat how it's evolved over the last uh, uh, decades. Uh, it's very neat, as a matter of fact. Uh, the only thing that uh, disappoints me a little bit is the fact that the storylines are so vastly accelerated that if you miss one Monday Night Raw, uh, you got to get an update somewhere. <laughs> call your attorney. <laughs> or we call the uh, Mean Gene Hotline, and we'll find out the information. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I've been having a little trouble getting my money out of that thing lately. <laughs> I remember on that uh, last edition of the Old School Raw just recently, you were talking about the hotline, and it's like, man, I haven't heard that reference in a long time. <laughs> well, you know what? And it was a good place to do it, uh, Baltimore. I got a lot of great, great feeling in Baltimore. First Slammies I did there. Uh, we did a lot of television early on. And that in 1999 at the Baltimore Arena is a very stage that I introduced the winner of the Nitro Girl contest uh, in Baltimore. You know who that winner was? Uh, I don't remember. It's been a long time. Well, she was one of the most popular Nitro Girls, but she transitioned into somebody else. Her name, and she was a Baltimore neighbor, was Stacy Keebler, oh, yes. Miss Hancock, <laughs> uh, and just a just a great, great gal. By the way, I believe uh, I believe she just got married. Oh yeah, I, I, now, something to do with a shotgun. I have no idea, but uh, <laughs> just some speculation on my part. <laughs> they did have a movie called Knocked Up, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what what do you think people are going to remember uh, about me and Gene Oakland and the legacy that you've uh, you've uh, built uh, uh, for yourself? 
Well, I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know what they're going to remember. I hope they can forget the, a few of the bills that I've ran up around uh, uh, the country and around the world. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, I think what they're going to remember is, I believe I gave everybody a fair shake until they stepped on my toes, and then I could be a little verbally combative. But uh, uh, it, it's a business that I've enjoyed. I still enjoy it immensely. And for the most part, the people have been very, very good to me. I'm starting to sound there like uh, somebody else. You know? <laughs> That's another, another thought. Yeah. They've been very good to me. <laughs> no, uh, the fans have always been great. Uh, they were understanding. I uh, saw a ton of them this weekend in uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, with that big uh, fan fest uh, that uh, featured Hulk Hogan, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Hey, there's your main event from WrestleMania One. There you go. And a little guy that uh, wears his shorts a little too tight. Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Boy, he squeaks. <laughs> Uh, are you uh, ever going to be a, a, a special guest on the uh, WWE Network's uh, Raw pre-show or backstage pass at all? Well, I, I think that possibility always exists. Uh, I, I did some shows, I think, in the past that were uh, groundbreaking. Uh, I think All American Wrestling was uh, something, it was a magazine type of show, as was the latest one that I did back in the early uh, 2000s called WWE Confidential. Oh, yes. And, and, and that, I thought, was a very compelling uh, piece of uh, journalism that covered exclusively wrestling and the wrestling superstars. Plus, I got to meet uh, Trish Stratus a few times there. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember Confidential, and I remember too. Uh, uh, last year, I had the opportunity, the great opportunity, to talk to one of the, uh, a person that you used to work with uh, back in the WCW days, uh, Mister <laughs> Mister Lee Marshall. Do you guys ever uh, communicate back and forth still? Well, I don't. I don't. The Lee owes me money, and <laughs> so he's a little reluctant to uh, to call me. So I. <laughs> I just really can't uh, I can't do anything, uh, you know, as far as having contact with a guy. <laughs> it uh, it's just one of those deals. Oh, okay. <laughs> a good, good man, though. He got a great voice. Yeah, yeah. For being the uh, Tony the Tiger. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just uh, it's just a thrill to to be able to chat with you. We have got a couple more questions I want to ask you real quick, and then we'll let you go. Uh, uh, and, uh, what, what do you think, uh, overall is, is going to be your f favorite, uh, WrestleMania of all? Well, I don't, I don't think you can really gauge them by favorite WrestleMania because if you split it up, the way I see it, there are four eras, uh, distinct eras, you know, the early days with the rock and wrestling and, uh, we did, uh, WrestleMania at Madison Square Garden, then three locations, for WrestleMania 2 in Long Island, Chicago, and L.A., WrestleMania 3 with 93,173. I counted them all <laughs> at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. WrestleMania 4 and 5 at uh, Trump Plaza and the Convention Center in Atlantic City, and the list just goes on. WrestleMania 6, I believe, up in uh, Toronto, and uh, we went to Indy and... They were in Las Vegas, and maybe put on a toga. <laughs> so, I mean, there's all kind of different eras here, and uh, it, it, it kind of morphed into what it is today, a very elaborate mixture of uh, athleticism, of uh, angles, of storylines, and of mainstream entertainment. Last year at the uh, NetLife uh, uh, Stadium in the... Uh, in the New York City area, uh, I, th I thought that it was just unbelievable. You know, kind of a cool day and night, yeah. uh, 40-ish, but uh, wow, what a show. Yeah, that it, was... It is the greatest show on earth, and I think that's what Vince wanted to do. He wanted to one-up uh, Barnum and Bailey, and probably John Ringling. <laughs> so one, one last question I have for you. Uh, uh, and and uh, it goes with the, the the future wrestling. What do you think the wrestling's going to be like ten years from now? Wow, uh, as a visionary, I I think uh, 
the uh, the performers are going to become more athletic. Uh, you can see the flying that uh, is down the ring today compared to 40 or 50 years ago when I was a little mark sitting back in the uh, Minneapolis Auditorium <laughs> watching some of these guys. They never made it two inches off the uh, off the mat. Uh, but today, I mean, with all of the uh, athletic young men, uh, their diets, their uh, uh, physical condition, and uh, and certainly what they know today over, if you didn't work 30 years ago, you didn't get paid. Oh, wow. If you get hurt today, the company still takes care of you. So uh, I think they've got the best of both worlds. And certainly their well-being is in their best interest by the company itself. Don't want anybody to get hurt, even though it does happen. Yeah, it does. Well, I appreciate uh, you uh, let me uh, uh, interview you, me, dude. This has been a, a, a definitely a rare treat, and uh, uh, I just want to say thank you personally uh, because uh, you, you have no idea how much of a big deal this is to me and my radio listeners here at Rapid City, South Dakota. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to come on into Rapid, then we're going to jump in a, in a car uh, or horse and buggy, whichever you prefer, <laughs> and shoot up to Sturgis, have one there, and then stop in at the number 10 saloon in Deadwood, South Dakota, and have a couple of bumps there. You know, we used to have a Mean Jeans Burgers in beautiful downtown Deadwood. Oh, wow. I did not know that. I, I've, seen, yeah. I've seen some of the pictures uh, on uh, uh, Google about Mean Jeans Burgers, but I didn't know much about that. Well, they're now basically in the college universities and military installations worldwide, and I'm still very proud to be uh, associated with them. Oh, that's cool. Well, thanks uh, for letting me interview you, Gene. And uh, anything else you want to say before we let you go? You do have my address where you can send the check. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll make sure I get a loan from the bank, too. <laughs> okay. And uh, and we'll see you at WrestleMania. It's going to be a big time. April 6th, New Orleans, Louisiana, at the Mercedes-Benz Super Bowl. All right. Thanks. Thanks, a lot. thanks a lot, Gene. We appreciate it. Work it. Back in touch. All right. Bye. And that was the legendary me and Gene Okerlund. And, uh, man, I tell you, I don't know how the heck I pulled this one off, you know. If you were to ask me, I don't know. I just, uh, it's just one of those type of interviews that just, it just worked. <laughs> All I did was send a request. Didn't even think that, you know, when you look at his uh, Facebook page, you don't even think that it's actually, you know, he doesn't have a profile picture at all on Facebook. So it was it was a little leery for me to, to know if this was actually me and Gene at all. But uh, as you heard, it it was. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. I, I really try very hard to try to get really good guests uh, as much as I can. I don't know how, how big of guests I'm going to be getting in the future, but I always say that, and then something like this happens. So, <laughs> and yes, uh, if it works out this summer, I'm definitely going to be planning a uh, bringing back the Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture series. Uh, uh, if I'm still on K-Tech this summer, depending on how things go, uh, I want to bring back that feature for the summertime as I did last year when I was just doing it on YouTube uh, because that was a very popular series. And, and it's still kind of the series that's going on now, but since I'm on the radio, I'm just uh, enjoying it more more and more and more and having more, uh, bigger opportunities than I ever had before. So that was uh, me and Gene Oakland. He will be at WrestleMania 30 this uh, Sunday. And I uh, hope you guys uh, tune into WrestleMania. This is not, we're not supported by WWE at all. I'm just a big fan of, of, of that uh, brand, and I always have been because now that all the territories are gone, uh, besides some of the independent territories that are still around, uh, I used to love WCW back in the day, but uh, it's not around no more. So you gotta, if there's one company to pick that, uh, that a person should like, where you uh, uh, will get a variety of, uh, of uh, things, it should be WWE. As far as I'm concerned, and the WWE Network uh, is great. I think uh, uh, I think uh, you guys should go check it out. Not just because I tell you to, just because if you're a real fan of wrestling and you want to see something, uh, you want to see all these great pay per views that uh, uh, some of them never ever came out to DVD or on demand. This is this is like the first time ever for every pay per view and every uh, bit of uh, of. Uh, uh, WWE footage that you could possibly get 
uh, for a span of what they're charging. So I think uh, it's worth it. So if you can afford to go to a movie, or if you can afford to to go uh, out to a concert, well, then I don't think to spend ten dollars a month on this service is uh, is a bad deal. So anyway, I want to say thank you to me, Gene. Oakland, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk again. I, I do have his number, so <laughs> uh, I can say that and be pretty uh, witty about that, huh? <laughs> I got his number. How many people can say that, huh? <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back with uh, more great music here. We got a long. We still got a jam-packed show to to go here uh, with uh, the, the old Reb and Frankie Slauson here on the Frankie, the all-new Frankie Slauson show. Right here on KTech. <laughs> 